Welcome, this is Ralph Bivens, the Ralph Bivens Project, and we're be sure to you know, go to our website, realtynewsreport.com, and check out the news there and our other publications. And we're, uh, we're going to talk about an interesting topic today, brand, uh, which I'm not, you know, I'm not really thinking about, you know, what, what Haas Cartwright did to the cows on the Bonanza Ranch. Right? This, is, this is a different kind of brand, you know, this, this is, uh, this is involving, I, I would guess, kind of like the intersection of you know, graphic design, architecture, real estate, and and the, and the, the where the company's logo is and how you integrate all these things together and and help people make space and and do site projects everything and to uh help the companies express their what they do in in a, in a physical and visible, visible way um and we, we're jerry alexander he's uh here with us and he's a global leader of the brand design practice of Gensler, which has offices in 50 cities around the world. It's a very big architecture firm. He heads up that practice, the brand practice, brand design practice. And of course he was just named, uh, you know, co-managing director of the um, local office in Houston, yeah. which is a pretty big office. And uh, Got it. so, so welcome, Jerry. Thank you, know. you Ralph. Good to be here. Tell me a little, just a, a little, you know, the, the short version, the intro to what, what, what's your practice, your brand practice, brand design practice. What's that entail? Okay. Well, you actually, you had a really good description, uh, you know, about that when really the way I look at it is we integrate, you know, with architecture, with graphics, with signage and logos and all that. And it's with the company culture, right? Or the company values. And it's, it's, and we talk about it and how does a company express itself, you know, and how does it exp express itself at every touch point, you know, that someone might encounter it. And so for us, we talk, it's not, you know, you think about, you might think about that in consumer packaged goods, but for us and as architects and interior designers, we look at it differently. It's like, how do our buildings and spaces and colors and textures and lighting, how does that all speak together, you know, kind of holistically about a company's values, mission, character. So I think that's brand. And then the brand practice, of course, is the, is kind of the idea of, integrating that in to all of our projects. And so <clears throat> bringing this storytelling, this narrative uh, early on in a strategic way to really let everyone on the team, stakeholders, designers, you know, consultants all align one story, kind of one direction. So it, it's, it's really, if you do it right, it's a really great glue that helps hold things together and give everybody a path. Oh, that's cool. I know one thing that's in very recent news uh, that you're involved with is the you know Memorial City, uh, a portion of Memorial City is called Memorial Town Square. It's right. the development. Uh, tell us about uh, what's going on there. Uh, this is West Houston. Yeah, it's West Houston, uh, right adjacent to uh, Memorial City Mall. Uh, and really what we're doing there is, is it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a great, actually, it's a fantastic design. It's a, it's a nice kind of low scale, intimate. It's got, it's, it's, it's kind of going to have a lot of landscaping. It's going to be a very walkable, very, you know, community oriented and it's outdoor, you know? Uh, so it's, it's going to be, it's really going to be a celebration of kind of that area with, beautiful trees and landscaping stuff and these modest, you know, quaint character buildings uh, that just provide great space, you know. And, you know, if you can do that, you know, and our clients at uh, Metro National have just been fantastic. You just capture this vision and then you stay on that path. So the buildings, the landscape, the paving, the signage, everything is, is going to be aligned around delivering on this this great community piece that's it's just going to be an absolutely great place to go and hang out it'll be a green space there like a, a, the kind of a community green space with food and beverage and things of that nature right right yeah. around, 
Yeah, we'll actually have a town square in the middle. Uh, and, you know, we, they've, they've done a great job recently of doing other little small green spaces that are really great scale. Because, you, you know, green spaces that are this right scale just really get magical when you surround them with the right uses, so restaurants and things. So I think this is going to be another really, really good example. And it's very green. <laughs> yeah, I know. And a part of that, of course, is that the Sears, uh, an old Sears store was connected to the mall. And, and that's been, that's gone. You know, it's, it's, right. it's amazing. I mean, you, you could write a book about, maybe I'm giving away a good idea, but you could write a book about what's happened to Sears real estate and the former places that Sears used to be. <laughs> right. Pretty phenomenal. They were, you know, they were at the forefront of some of those developments, you know, and they owned those, uh, that land. And so it's really things, small cities grew up around Sears developments. So, yeah, you're right, Ralph. That's probably a great, probably a great story in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got, of course, we have the one, the, the ION that, the, that that's right. Know, Rice is doing in the Midtown area and, and things. So that's yeah, and, and we're that, working on that. And I got to tell you, that's an amazing uh, building as well. Uh, what? But just it's a great concept. Rice and uh, and those folks are just. And then they're really onto something special there. Yeah, yeah. You guys were involved with that one. I know. Yes, it's been uh, pretty good. Yeah. But, yes. it's, uh, uh, it's faster than uh, I thought it would, you know, but it's come up uh, in downtown, of course, you know, Gensel was just involved in major, major redevelopment of the Houston Center. Yeah. Yeah. So about the so I, and I've actually that's something I've been working on for about five years. Uh, so uh, and it and it continues to go. Uh, with our clients at Brookfield, and we we moved in. We did the first phase or two, uh, and Houston Center one and two, and the podium and that ground floor. And so, and we've moved our offices here. Uh, and so we have two floors. And Ralph, it's it's such a unique space. You'd really appreciate it. It's it, we have these double and triple high volume spaces that were traditionally public space, but when, you know before we moved in and now it's part of our office space, but it's just, I mean, we, we look over our resource library. It doesn't, it just looks through large trusses, uh, into the public space and out into a plaza. So it's, and there are no, no glass, no walls. So it's just, it's fantastic. The blend of space, you know, I love the fact that our offices are just so connected, you know, uh, to the spaces adjacent. Um, and so, and we continue to work on it, uh, with, on Fulbright and then across the street at the shops doing a complete renovation of those. So, uh, at the end of this, this will be five blocks of, uh, downtown and recently developed. Um, the only issue is that we, you know, we got our office finished, uh, in March of 2020. <laughs> Just <in town. laughs> <laughs> so we moved in for a few weeks and then we left. Uh, but we're back now, and it's it's fantastic. It's a really great space. And how how did you have the the branding for your own firm? How how's the the branding situation work in Gensler's on space? And, and yeah, so it's a I think it's a it's a great example of how brands should work and how a lot of brands work today. Their their brands are adaptive to their community, to their location, you know, really good brands. Now you still have to have that consistency. So if you see Gensler, you'll probably recognize, you know, some aspects of our, you know, the visual pieces, but it's the, it's the cultural manifestations of brand that have to be localized, right? Because the Gensler Houston is different than Gensler Dallas or San Antonio and or Gensler New York. And so, um, it's the, the way we, the way brand comes to life at Gensler Houston is, is really a, a lot about our people and our clients. And so we have, we, we have phrases like, you know, it's, it's six o'clock time to go home and, you know, to remind ourselves, you know, of our passion, we love what we do, but sometimes you have to, you know, creativity needs to take a break. Um, but we also have you know, quote wall upstairs that we change the quote on constantly. And it's, it's just, it's providing inspiration. 
And again, so I would think that's part of our brand because we're creative and we're, we're trying to inspire each other. So we have these spots in the office that allow us to do that. Quote wall. Yeah. Uh, little comments that are written out and posted up there. Are yeah. So, displayed in some way. How are they displayed? Well, so, it, so it's like the changeable messages you would see, you know, roadside back in the day up on the piece. We have slide in letters. Uh, and so we can have Willie Nelson or the Dalai Lama. Just depends. <laughs> we have a wide range. That's a wide range. That's a wide range. <laughs> Hey, now, now, of course, you mentioned the, the adjacent to there, the another, the the, uh, the park shops, which I think has been rebranded, renamed. To, it was downtown retail, uh, and uh, you guys are helping with the redevelopment of that, which yeah, certainly needed to be done. Yeah, it's called the highlight. That's going to be, uh, and uh, and it's still, it's gonna, it's a significant food component. Uh, and 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 retail, which you know, for us, uh, we love it, and it's under construction, and it's still packed. You know, we this is it's right next door. It's all connected. We can connect my sky bridges. We can, but you know, I, I prefer to actually get down on the street. Um, but yeah, we're, it's a complete redevelopment uh, on the inside and the out, and we're really making a, a couple of great changes. Really opening up that building to the street, you know, and bringing some big glass and entry expressions down to the street just to start to engage the street a little bit more. That building, that two blocks was pretty, uh, you could say fortress-like. It wasn't, you know. <laughs> That's what, uh, yeah, it, they got it. I've called it fortress-like. Yeah. Fortress-like and whatever, because, you know, just it would, you couldn't tell it was in there. And it's always been a big problem. Yeah. And I think this will help really open that up and, and and let you know hopefully and people are just you can i can see it right now straight across the window this whole corner is just open right up with glass and lots of pretty fun users up in there yeah well the, the i think uh the, the rendering i saw uh, a few months ago had he turned part of that building kind of made a lot of glass a lot of in, very at least facing the the, the the convention center in that direction yeah it, we welcome in people that don't know it's a people in the buildings. It's the middle of a bunch of high rises, you know, high rise office basically. And you know, everybody knows this is an easy place to go to lunch and there's a big variety. And yeah, people. so that's, that's kind of been its history. And, and they've tried to, you know, a lot of different areas and they had, they had Wolf, uh, Ed Wolf, you know, you take us yeah. at once and all these things. And uh, it's just a hard, play to expand it beyond this is a huge lunch place right what can we do the other days of the week and um and then how do you ever get any night business weekend business uh, those things so yeah oh it's funny ralph and you say that it's because it's uh, you know we're going to have some some users some new users and they'll extend that offering right into the evening hours uh and there's and there's 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 a demand down here but it's it's hard to it's hard to anticipate demand, right? It's hard to capture what's not there, and, and uh, at least you know on your projections. But the first, you know, along McKinney Street that you're talking about, I mean, that's going to be a hundred plus feet of glass, full height, and it's just going to pull you right in. Um, so it'll be much more inviting, like you said. You'll know that something's up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't have to work in one of these buildings to actually go. Oh, there is something there. Yeah. So it's going to meet the street. In several really nice ways, and, and yeah. really open up. But that's that'd be great. It, it is, uh, you know, the, the people could navigate there through from, uh, in the tunnels, and you had the sky bridges. And right, of course, you look back at what the original Texas Eastern plan was done back in the early '60s and stuff. It was that was how people were thinking at that time. You know, to more, um, they weren't talking about. Just being on the street, you know, we, uh, they were they were talking more about let's get there without having to uh, get down there, get on the heat and you know, yeah. rush and stuff. So that, but I think that whole uh, line of thought is gone now. People want to be on the street; they want to see people, activity, and, and things of that nature. Yeah, and it's funny, Ralph. You know, when I first started working on it five years ago, we we got those drawings out of the archive, and 
I've got Texas Eastern and monorails. Can you imagine? Wow. Fun drawings. Yeah, I bet. that was futuristic. You know? yeah. The monorails, hey, that would have been cool. That would have been cool, cool right? We, we wish that would have been implemented. And I would really prefer that over what, you know, on the street things that we, we've done now. But, uh, oh, wouldn't that have been something? Monorails from here to George R. Brown down to the medical center. and oh. Well, Miami, Miami has those, you know, uh, monorail type of things above, way above grade, you know, maybe three or four stories up, you know, winding around between buildings and stuff. Yeah. Well, I think it's a pretty good system. You know, you get to the airport, bam, you know, and yeah. get to the airport in two minutes. And, you know, it, it's it's actually pretty cool. It's old now, but they go you know, people like it or something. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And when it's functional, I think it's great. Another yeah. building you know, that's, uh, that, you know, I've been in a lot, uh, uh, 1100 Louisiana. You know, yeah. I wrote a story about that uh, three or four years ago or something that, you guys, uh, and, and I, you know, I think I quoted you then. And, and you get big project. It's a major, fifty-story, you know, built by Gerald Times in, in 1980, I think. Uh, tell us what you did with that skyscraper, and, and and how do you prove that? So, so we've been working. So we've been working on that particular project for on several different occasions uh you know we're fortunate enough to work with them on to redo the fountain that whole front plaza to bring water and scale and green you know to that front space uh and in the last several years we did um it was we did a complete lobby renovation so just to bring it up and make it bring it a lot more hospitality a lot more feel because there's a Starbucks in there at, at one end of that lobby that at three o'clock in the afternoon, there's 50 people in there. And it's like, it's amazing the kind of energy that's going on in that building. And then, so what the, what enterprise and Heinz decided to do was that this, they talked to us about bringing in a big digital expression. And so what we did is we've got a, a, a digital wall that's 32 feet across, 16 feet tall, that goes from ground floor to the to the tunnels where the escalators are and we've helped and we've created i don't know hours and hours of content uh we have we host uh local schools digital programs and they have they even have receptions and openings there to show their work and they bring their families we have content from the zoo from the ballet so one of the things that Heinz and Enterprise wanted was this this big digital wall, but it was all about community, bringing the community and connecting. And so it really is like this, it's a massive presentation of all the stuff that's going on in Houston, you know. And so for, if you're coming and going out of that building, you're going to you're gonna get a glimpse of a lot of different things that are going on. Uh, it's worth going in. You're walking down Louisiana Street to go in the building, go in 1100 Louisiana Take, take the elevator down and you can't miss it. Escalator, yeah. escalator yeah. down to the, you know, the, the basement level, the, the tunnel. Right. Let me give you one more, Ralph. I don't know. There, there. Huh? Um, there, there was a tree beards there. When, I don't know if they made it through the pandemic or not, but uh, I've, I've been to the tree beards there. When, okay. So yeah, tree beards is still there, Ralph. And so you should go back down. And what we just opened was an El Real. You know, the one we had down on Westheimer, now we've got, it's, we've got a reopen. It's right next to Tree Beards, and it's uh, some of the same menu, you know, so it's really fantastic. And what you're going to find out about soon is there's a space right above Tree Beards and El Real on the ground floor that's going to be called Real Agave. Agave? You mean like tequila? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 100% of Guave. Yeah, there we go. Wow. Well, all right. I'm impressed. Yes. Yeah, so there's that's going to be coming uh, later this summer. Really? Really? Yeah. It's yeah. under construction. It's on the street level, and you can enter uh, uh, from, from, the, from the sidewalk. We're going to have you enter from the lobby for now, right? Lobby. Okay. Until we get uh, some of that set. But eventually, the idea is that we open it up to the street. Yeah. 
but and it's at street level. You can see it. Very cool. And the operator is? Uh, it's uh, Bill Floyd. You know, so he was part of El Real, Port of Vino. So, uh, and this one's called Real Agave. Look for it in late July. Okay. Right. Well, we'll, we'll be down there. We'll be down. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, maybe Bill will invite me to the grand opening. Okay. The, I uh, he will, now that you, you're going to tell him. <laughs> but, but, you know, the, since we're right there on Louisiana Street, uh, that's a great building. You know, it's or it's maintained pretty darn good occupancy uh, for, yeah. you know, for a long time. But are you thinking about Louisiana Street at that building? They came in by Hines in 1980. And then, of course, you know, there's Wells Fargo, uh, Century Dwelling, not the 71 story building. Yeah. Uh, there. And, and you go down there, and there's, uh, you know, Shell One and Shell Two, that they, they were originally called. Mr. Hines developed them. Yes. Well, in back early 70s, and I think they finally owned 1970 or something. But you look at, and then of course, you go a little bit further down. Uh, I guess they, Republic Bank, uh, now Bank of America or something like that. No, it's TC3 Energy Plaza. That's what it is. It's changed names about 500 times since it was built. But, but I remember Republic Bank, yes. <laughs> yeah, everybody knows it on the skyline. It's you know the, the pink granite. Uh, is, you can't miss it. And, and then Pennzoil. But you look at all of those buildings and you think, wow, this is like Louisiana Street was kind of, and I guess it still is, just a major you know, canvas for you know developers to put up some fantastic buildings. Yeah. What a great, yeah, you're right. What a great street for uh, just incredible architecture and over a time frame. Yeah. It's yeah. great to have somebody like the Heinz to be able to help us deliver those kinds of pieces, man. And the yeah. Texas tower, the new piece is just right. crazy good. But that's, that's, that's a cool building. And I, really, I like it a lot too. They did a great job with that. Yeah. That's uh, and, 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 uh, you know, of course, everybody knows Penn's oil. That's where, uh, yes. you know, they really were in the cutting edge. You know, everybody in the nation was talking about that building. It was so different uh, when they opened, I think, in 75. Uh, so different, you know, kind of black, dark glass, uh, trapezoidal buildings, uh, slanted top. And you know, nobody had done something like that. It was pretty, it was great, you know. I think the, the, the New York Times architecture critic you know, called it the uh, building of the decade. Yeah. And, you know, and Andy Warhol came down and, you know, he was shooting Polaroids of it and all this stuff. It was, it was, it was world, world news. You know, it was everybody's talking about it. And it, it oh, it was so timeless. I mean, we had our offices there for many, many years. Um, loved it. Two towers on one city block. That was just crazy. How did you feel when uh, they, everybody said, well, hey, we're going to move over to Houston Center? You know, it's a little bittersweet because, Ralph, we'd been in that within a block or so of that area for, for you know, 48 years. Uh, so uh, a little bittersweet. But of course, you know, and then we've moved over here and it's absolutely incredible. Uh, and we've been working on this for five years. We've got a few more years left to go with Brookfield. Um, but uh, we love it. It's a great new space. It's beautiful. It's real close to the street, a lot of connectivity. And uh, I don't know, uh, this is our 50th year in Houston for Gensler. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's 50 years. Wow. And yeah. I read, uh, you know, Jill, your publicist, I think, sent me a thing saying this is uh, the fiftieth year, and uh, but it was also like was the first expansion office. Uh, yeah, is that right? The first. Yeah, expansion. it is. So this, we were the second office uh, in nineteen seventy-two. You know, from Art, Art founded this in uh, San Francisco, and then uh, I guess. Six years later, we, we came here, but, you know, he came here for 
uh, to work with Gerald Hines and work on Pennzoil and and man, it just keeps going. Pretty pretty cool. Pretty cool. The uh, uh, yeah, one thing that you know. Uh, here I am. I'm, you know, I wrote a book, uh, Houston 2020. Uh, yeah, I think you can still get it on Amazon. Maybe. <laughs> it's still <laughs> ugly. It's, it's far from the bestseller list, let me tell you. But hey, I still like it. So, but anyway, I wrote that, and it's been a few years. But I didn't even know about this other project I want to talk about, the Coca Cola North Point Experience Tour. That okay. You designed and that's uh, you know um, as everybody knows there was a you know a, the, the Coca Cola bottling plant on Bissonette near Kirby uh, was there for years, decades, and decades, and decades, and Coca Cola went out to the north side there by Beltway Eight and Forty Five, and tell us what they, they of course they have a lot of bottling you know. Right facilities is for you know distribution point for major beverage. But tell us, tell us about what you guys came up with to to brand that Coca Cola building. Right. So yeah, and just a little context. It's a it's a million square feet uh, bottling facility, and it's and it's really state of the art, you know. And it's so you know it's it's done so much for efficiency, sustainability, you know, quality. So, you know, they've they've taken a number of older facilities and they're they've, you know, kind of consolidated to this one uh, location. Now, what they've what they've got is they've, like I said, a million square feet, but of state of the art equipment that's absolutely incredible. And so you've got city officials, you've got stakeholders, you've got, you know, tourists that, you know, are like interested and fascinated. But you can't get out there. You can't. You can't walk that kind of space. Uh, and then you don't want people out there. It can. It's potentially, you know, hazardous, but uh, dangerous, I guess. For, and so what they ask us to do is, we took about twenty thousand square feet of space that was up on their second level, overlooking, you know, where they where they produce the bottles and do the packaging and the filling and all of this great stuff, and we created a a set of experiences and so you come up and there's different stations that you stop at and you can understand how bottle making and forming happens you can look at how labeling happens how filling happens even how packaging and kind of stacking because they have specific equipment that decides what each palette what mix of beverages and stuff go on each palette to go to a specific customer so it's highly automated uh, it's incredibly, you know, fascinating to see. But what they what what we help them do is give them small windows that you could look at so many details without being out on the floor. And so it's really a fantastic facility. It was it was not intended for public flow in and out, but they they get a lot of requests for people to come in and thank you. God, how many you know school kids. Boy Scout, there, girls, yeah. Scout, Cubs, all those kind of groups would like to see that uh, because it, you look at it. You know, I've looked, reviewed it, it. You have a pretty good photo display on your website, yeah, um, which has that just major uh, kind of a sculptural uh, Coca Cola uh, chandelier, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's. that's, that's <laughs> Uh, 700 uh, recycled Coca-Cola bottles into a 22 foot tall chandelier in the entry of the building. So it's very fun. It's very Coca-Cola. Um, That's uh, how do you, who made that sculpture? How do you get a, a Coca-Cola bottle sculpture? That's amazing. So yeah, so we designed that, and then we we had to call around a bunch of places. We found a group out of Austin. Uh, to help us build it, um, and they built it really quickly because uh, we it took us a while to find them. And once we find them, we're like, oh, and we need this quickly. <laughs> they did a fantastic job. And no, it is. It's very cool. Just just the whole thing. I thought, you know, that's that was my point. Hey, you know, I I wrote the book on Houston and, and just missed missed the Coca Cola experience. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm 
major oversight. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're, uh, but you're, uh, just a little thought uh, you know, before we go, just, just thinking about, you know, you, an expert on brands and, um, and, and things. And I was, you know, I was wondering if you think if, um, uh, you know, there, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the big gas station travel thing, I, I was thinking, oh, you know, the Bucky's deal that's ah, yeah. guys grown that thing a phenomenal spread to many states. Uh, you know, they they do really well. Yes. They, I think he just gave fifty million to uh, Texas A and M, you know, but for retailing school or something. But anyway, I think that's you know a pretty good brand, but I don't know why. But you seem to be very what what do you think are some Companies that may have done some phenomenal brands that kind of stick out to you as, uh, with your expertise. Well, uh, I, I, that's fantastic. I think you know Bucky's is, is to me is such a classic example of you know it's not it's not this polished you know corporate piece. It's you know it's a beaver, right? And and it's colorful and it's playful and and it is built for the market that he serves. And man, what what vision! Um, it's really fun. It's engaging, but make no question about it. It is service, service, service. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it's it's and it's just the things you want for that particular market. But I think I think you just what I like about brands. What I think are the most successful brands are the ones that are the most responsive. The ones that are able to adapt and move. And I'll, I think Coca Cola is one of the greatest brands of all time. But I think you know the. the but their philosophy and the way they engage communities and, and adapt their brand as it goes around the world, it's just f fascinating to me. I, I just, I really, I think it just takes a lot of confidence. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of thought, um, because your brand, you know, Coca-Cola, their Spencerian script brand is, is likely worth more than their, all of their physical facilities put together, all their assets. Um, and so at the end of the day, uh, your brand is your value, and and so you've got to be incredibly protective. But it's but you can't let it sit there on a shelf. It can't just can't just sit on the shelf. It has to keep growing and evolving. So, Ralph, there's so many great examples out there. But you know, it's it's the ones that are able to adapt and move forward and keep growing. They're the ones that are the yeah. most successful. Well, when you were talking about that, I was thinking about you know that great television commercial they had where they had the kids young people singing, you know, I like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Oh. You know, all the Coca-Cola brands in different languages and stuff. And yeah. it's like, it, that was pretty, uh, you know, that, that, that said so much about it. we're global, we're everywhere. And, you know, it, it was, it was pretty effective. <laughs> yeah. And they only bring the bears out at Christmas or, you know, the holiday season. Oh, yeah. And it's like, wow because they love them but we're only on these small towns that that's good <laughs> uh anything else that you guys got coming in the pipeline um, oh there's there's oh there's always so much fun stuff around i'll say the um you know the the thing i get super excited about where we're going is there's there's so much interest in the and you're you're talking about some of the ones i work on so uh like the coca-cola bottling and the tke tower in atlanta and some of these others their their industry their larger they're kind of non-traditional companies and that that Gensler would work with or the ones that don't see the public spotlight right but they're doing so many great things that they're they're interested when we talk to them about expressing their brand and letting people see a little bit more about them people want to know about companies these, these days they want to know about your sustainability and your de and i and a lot of other things and so part of what brand is going to let you do these companies is help them tell that story certainly get out in front and talk about the things that we're doing as companies so i think you'll see a lot more fun ones those are the ones i'm i keep looking at yeah the the, the tk elevator um you know it includes a, a test tower there it's near the new the braves atlanta Braves stadium in Atlanta. Yeah. we were talking about that just just before we got started here and um 
just the way that you guys change this uh, big, you know, 400 foot tower uh, into uh, you know something that tells people that this is this is TK Elevator Company. This is interesting stuff. Well, it was great. Thank you. Well, yeah, and we I tell them all the time. There's more to just elevator than pushing that button. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on. So this building was an expression of that. Well, when we next time we next time the Astros play the Atlanta Braves, maybe they'll show that in the background. I'll be looking. Oh. <laughs> well, Ralph. Oh, and I was I was there during the World Series. We were finishing it up, and it was oh. it was difficult to say the least. <laughs> Well, we'll be maybe the maybe the Strohs will be against the Braves in the World Series again this year. I would love it. It would be great. Jerry Alexander, thank you very much, and uh, interested in your work at Kinsler. And we'll be we we got it on our to do list to you know go down to eleven hundred Louisiana in July and see that new street level facility or the retail restaurant facility there, and um, we we're looking forward to that, but. It's great to uh, do this show. We appreciate it. We're going to get a little further down the road. Maybe you can come back someday, okay? Absolutely. I'd appreciate it. Thanks, Ralph.